Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how I just refinanced my mortgage in exactly 21 days, from application date until the funding date. And it all cost me total $270. You know, the mortgage process can be a little bit complicated and if you've been through before, maybe a little bit frustrating. But as I've mentioned, I've been working in the mortgage business for a number of years now and there are some tricks to the trade. You have to know what lenders consider to be important. And you may have seen a previous video where I talked about what lenders are really looking for. So in this video, it's kind of gonna follow up on that one. It's gonna talk about how you can refinance your mortgage in less than 30 days and potentially purchase a property with a mortgage in less than 30 days. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end of the video because I'm gonna share with you some specific actions that we took to make sure that the lender had every single bit of information they needed to make a decision. Let's get started. Okay, so if you remember from a previous video, we talked about how lenders are looking at four specific things. Credit, capacity, collateral, and capital. We mentioned in the previous video that what it all comes down to is risk. Lenders need to know that they've covered all their bases to make sure that the money that they're lending is likely to be returned to them and that the borrower is less likely to default on the mortgage. So when a lender is looking to mitigate risk in a mortgage transaction, they are looking at these four specific categories and they're gonna request documentation based on those four categories. Again, I really deep dived each of these specific sections in a previous video, so I will link in the description below as well as at the end of this video. I will make sure you have an opportunity to watch that video as well. This video is gonna, gonna build on that one and talk about what specific actions you can take and how you can prepare to make sure that when you do refinance, when you apply for a mortgage, that you have your ducks in a row. So with the credit aspect, the lender is going to pull a credit report. They're gonna pull what's called a tri-merge credit report. It's gonna be from all three credit reporting agencies, from Experian, from TransUnion, and from Equifax. And they're gonna look at that data, but they're looking, gonna look at some specific things. They're gonna be looking for credit inquiries. Okay, and credit inquiries, as you may or may not know, I don't know if I spelled that right, credit inquiries are when you formally ask another creditor for debt. That could be a credit card, that could be a student loan, that could be an auto loan, it could be another mortgage application potentially. So a lender is going to look at these credit inquiries on your credit report for say the past two, three, four months and if they see a credit inquiry that does not result in an actual debt on the credit report, they're going to ask you about it. They're going to want to know, did this debt result in any type of new application for debt or an actual new credit account? So what you can do is you can go look at your credit report in advance. Go to the annualcreditreport.com for your free credit report. Take a look at what credit inquiries you've had in the past three or four months. And if you've had some, make sure that you generate what's called a letter of explanation. Just take a piece of paper, write down for these specific credit inquiries, I did not open any new debt. But if you did, don't lie about it. Make sure you provide a statement, the most recent statement you have available, whether it's an auto loan, whether it's a credit card, you name it, have that most recent statement available if it's not showing up on the credit report yet. That letter, what we call a signed and dated letter of explanation, should be signed by each and every borrower that has that credit inquiry. And you can provide that to your mortgage letter right out of the gate. They're gonna like you if you do that. Okay, so when I say capacity, you need to think ability. Because the lender is looking at your ability to repay the mortgage. They're gonna be looking at your income as well as your monthly obligations. Not necessarily groceries or utility payments or any kind of household expenses. They're looking at your obligations on a month to month basis. They're gonna be looking at what's called the, in, the debt to income ratio, which is your monthly debt divided by your qualifying monthly income. 
So what you need to do then is take a look in advance of your credit report and take a look and see what your debt to income ratio looks like. This can be extremely helpful because you have an idea if you even qualify for the mortgage before you even apply. So what you need to do is open up your credit report, take a look at your obligations, take a look at any credit cards, auto loans, student loans, even even if they're deferred, they're likely to include a monthly payment because they're not going to be deferred forever. Student loans, as well as housing accounts, maybe if you have an existing house. You need to be able to add all of those up and also compare that to your monthly income. So from an income standpoint, you should have a pretty good idea of where you're landing. Lenders are less likely to or may have more restrictions around using other types of income such as bonus income, overtime income, commission income. So be prepared to maybe qualify just on your base pay alone, though they may be able to use those other types of pay as well. You're going to need to provide your income documents right out of the gate. If you're a salary wage earner, somebody who gets a who works for a company, they get a pay you get a pay stub, you get W2s at the end of each year that summarizes your income. You're going to need to be prepared to provide four pay stubs if you're weekly or two pay stubs if you are bi-weekly or semi-monthly and the last two years of W2s. Make sure you have those documents readily available. If you're self-employed, you're going to need to be prepared to provide two years of personal tax returns. And if your company files a, its own business tax return, you're going to need to provide those two years of business tax returns as well. You may even be required to provide what's known as a profit and loss statement or a balance sheet or and a balance sheet for your business year to date. Make sure when you are generating and calculating your own debt to income ratio before you apply that you account for insurance and property taxes because those are going to be included if you don't already have the home if you are purchasing a home because your rent is just your rent we're not going to include that for qualifying but your property taxes will be included and your insurance for the new property as well but if it's your existing home that you are refinancing make sure you include your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance take those annual figures divide them by 12 and include those in your figure here for the debt to income ratio get an idea of where you land because most lenders are going to want to see that debt to income ratio below 43 percent one of the best ways that you can expedite the processing of your mortgage application is making sure you have all of your income documents ready to go. With your income and employment, make sure you know the phone number that the lender needs to call to verify your active employment. Lenders have to mitigate risk because some people lie on their mortgage application and they don't actually work for the company that they say they do. So every lender is going to call who you work for and make sure that they know that you are actively employed prior to approving the loan. So make sure you know that phone number for your HR department or your manager, depending on who it is. And if your company happens to utilize what's called the work number or in verify or some sort of automated verification service, which many do, go ahead and you can log into like a company like theworknumber.com and you can get a salary key in advance to make sure that, that automated process goes smoothly. Okay, so from a collateral standpoint, your lender is likely not always, but likely to do a full walk-in appraisal, which you're going to have to pay for. And they're going to be looking for two specific things. They're going to be looking to make sure that the, they know the value of the property compared to how much they are intending to lend you for the mortgage. And they're also looking at condition. So you should have a general idea of what your home is worth based on looking some, at some other homes in the neighborhood, but that's going to be just kind of a guesstimate. But what you can do is make sure that you have no health and safety issues on your property before you apply. What do I mean by health and safety? I mean, so we got LTV, which is the loan to value ratio. That's the value compared to the loans on the property. And then you also have condition. So when I say health and safety issues, make sure that like, for example, the water heater is double strapped. Make sure that you have a CO2 or a carbon monoxide detector installed in the home if it's required by law in your state. Make sure you have working smoke detectors. Make sure there are no types of health and safety issues 
on your home. If for some reason you have some issues that they cite, they're gonna make the appraisal subject to, and you're gonna to have to get those issues resolved and then pay additional money to have that licensed appraiser come back out to the home and make sure that the issue has been resolved. As part of your collateral property review, make sure you have your homeowner's insurance ready to go and provide a copy of what's known as the declarations page or evidence of insurance, which shows the annual premium, what the coverages are, make sure you have that document ready to go and with your loan officer when you apply. On that same note, if you have an existing mortgage or if you have a mortgage on a different property or other properties, make sure you provide a copy of that mortgage statement and potentially even the mortgage note for those other properties if that mortgage is not being replaced by this new one. Okay, and let's talk about capital as well. You see, if you are purchasing a home, you're gonna need to show evidence that of money available to do the down payment on the property. And even if you're refinancing the mortgage, if you're gonna to have to come out of pocket for closing costs, you're gonna to have to show evidence that you have those assets available to pay for those closing costs. So the lender is likely, almost guaranteed to require two months of asset statements. And when I say af, af, asset statements, I'm saying bank statements for the last two months. to show evidence that you have that money available to pay. Now, here's my recommendation to you. Here's where you can save some time. You see, if you use your normal bank statement, odds are you're gonna have a lot of transactions in and out, in and out. You're gonna have direct deposits, maybe from your company that you work for, and the lender is going to scrutinize each and every transaction in that bank statement because they need to make sure that they're mitigating any risk, that maybe you borrowed money, or there's some sort of a loan in here, or a large deposit of some sort that could be evidence of a loan. Here's my recommendation to you. Open up, if you don't already have one, a savings account, maybe even an online bank, such as Synchrony Bank, um, CIT Bank, any of those banks, and deposit enough money in there for maybe five or $10,000 or however much money you need for the down payment or to show for those closing costs. Do it in advance. Put that money in there, let that money sit for two months. And that way that money is considered to be seasoned. When they look at those bank statements, it's gonna show just that opening balance, the interest accrued, and the closing balance. No transactions to review, no additional information they may need to ask for, because otherwise they're gonna maybe ask for a letter of explanation to indicate what a certain deposit is, and maybe even source that deposit and ask for more documents from you, which can be kind of frustrating. Big recommendation here, use those two months bank statements exclusively, that account exclusively just for the money you need for this transaction. At the end of the day, your mortgage refinance or mortgage purchase transaction will go smoothly if you have pre prepared in advance to give them the documents that you know they're gonna need when you think about mitigating risk for credit, capacity, collateral, and capital. Credit being your willingness to repay based on your credit report. Capacity based on your ability to pay, your income versus your monthly obligations. The collateral property that is securing the mortgage, making sure it's in great condition, or at least not having any deferred maintenance issues that they're gonna to have to resolve before approving the loan. And then capital, making sure that you have enough money on hand to cover the down payment and any closing costs or closing costs for a mortgage refinance transaction. At the end of the day, when I applied for my mortgage, I got it done in 21 days. And when it went to the underwriter for approval, they only had two conditions. They asked for the insurance, which I'd already actually given to the mortgage lender, which just got lost in between um, all the different emails we had going back and forth. And they had a question about an address on there that happened to be my dad's mailing address. I don't know how that caught on my credit report. Point is, two minor conditions at the underwriting review that really didn't have any place being there, a, a random address, which you really can't plan for, as well as a document I'd already provided, so I just quickly shot it over the, to them again, and I had my clear, clear to close pretty quickly. At the end of the day, you can be as prepared as you need to be here, but you have to be connected with a great mortgage lender or a mortgage broker. So I'm excited to share with you who I worked with. So I got three specific quotes. I got one from New American Funding, I got a quote from Loan Depot, as well as a quote from Optimum Home Mortgage. And I'm excited to, that I, to let you know that I went with Optimum Home Mortgage because they had the best rates as well as the best cost for those rates. So if you check out right over here, you're gonna see the contact information for the specific loan officer I used. I encourage you to hit up Mr. Michael Hansen over here. Make sure you let him know 
that you heard from Average Joe Money that he's a great lender to work with and that you are kind of guy that gives the best rates, the best closing costs, and is gonna communicate with you all along the way. Hey there, here at Average Joe Money, we talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. Whether it's refinancing your mortgage in 21 days, whether it's learning how to budget, which is the bedrock, the foundational element of personal finance, whether it's how to pay off your debts, how to save for your kid's retirement, not your kid's retirement, your kid's college, and your retirement, and all things in between, that's what we talk about here on this channel. If you haven't done it yet, hit that like button below and drop a comment to let me know that this was a beneficial topic and if there's any other topics you wanna hear about that affects people like you and me, the average Joe, please let me know. Also, if this is the kind of content that really speaks to you in your life, where you're at in your life situation right now, hit that subscribe button below and click on the bell to be alerted to all of my weekly recurring videos. I put out two videos each and every week. I'll catch you in the next video.